Welcome back to Job Code. Today, we will explore Flex Layout in .NET MAUI. Flex Layout is powerful for arranging UI elements in rows or columns and adapting them to different screen sizes. It is similar to CSS Flexbox. So if you are familiar with that, this will feel natural. Let's start. So what is a Flex Layout? Flex Layout allows us to organize elements into rows or columns with flexible sizing options. It is great for responsive designs because it automatically adjusts to the screen's width and height. Let's go to Visual Studio and explore its features step by step. Here I have already created a project named as Flex Layout Demo. And I have also created a content page inside it and named it as Flex Layout Demo Page. And we have also set this page as our initial page in our app.xaml.cs file. Now, Let's go to our Flex Layout demo page and replace this vertical stack layout with Flex Layout. And let's remove this label control and paste some button controls inside it. As you see, I have placed three button controls inside my Flex Layout. Now to see the default behavior of Flex Layout, let's run the application. As we can see, these three buttons are displayed horizontally next to each other. This is because of one of the properties which Flex Layout has. The name of the property is Direction. By default, the value of Direction is set to Row. So if I go back and set the Direction property here to Row and run the application, you can see no change is observed because by default, the direction property is set to row for flex layout. Now, if I go back and change the direction property to column, as you can see now, the buttons are stacked on top of each other in a column way. There are few more values which we can set for direction property. Like, we can set it to row reverse and column reverse. If I set it to row reverse, and save it. So you can see the buttons are again placed next to each other horizontally, but this time starting from right side of the screen. Similarly, if I set the direction property to column reverse, the buttons will be stacked on top of each other again, but this time starting from the bottom of the screen. Other than this, Flex Layout has many more properties. To understand them in a better way, let's see some more examples. Now, in this example, inside my flex layout, I have placed five button controls and set the width request of each button control to 100. In addition to that, here I'm using two more properties of flex layout, that is wrap and justify content. Now, if I go to the definition of wrap, now you can see it is of type flex wrap, which controls whether children are laid out in a single line or in multiple lines. The default value of this property is set to no wrap. So we can set these three values to our wrap property, no wrap, reverse, and wrap. By default, its value is set to no wrap, which means its children will be laid out in a single line. Now, if we want the children of this flex layout to be laid out across multiple lines, we can set the value of this wrap property to wrap. Let's remove this justify content for now. Let's save it and see how it looks. Now you can see I have placed my five button controls inside flex layout, but as there is no space for fifth button, so it is wrapped and placed in the next line. So that's how this wrap property works. Now, if I go back and set the value of wrap property to reverse, now you will see Again, the buttons are wrapped, but this time in the reverse order. As you can see now, currently there is no space between the buttons. Now we have another property inside flex layout, which help us in specifying how space is distributed between and around children along the main axis. So for this purpose, we can make use of the justify content property. This property takes six values, center, end, space around, space between, space evenly, and start. The default value of this property is set to start. 
let me change the value of wrap property back to wrap and let's remove this button for now now if you go to the definition of justify content you can see it is of type flex justify which specifies how space is distributed between and around children along the main axis now let us set the value of justify content to space evenly now what this will do is it will put an even space between and around our button controls similarly if you set it to space around now you can see we have space around our button controls now if i set it to center now all my button controls are placed in center along the main axis so this is how you can play around with the other values of justify content and arrange our buttons accordingly now there are few more properties which i wanted to discuss for that let us look at some other example now in this example i have a flex layout with its direction set to row and three button controls inside it with a text of small medium and large in addition to that this time i am making use of two more properties here that is flex layout dot basis and flex layout dot grow let's understand each of them one by one so flex layout helps us control the individual element sizing using the basis grow and shrink properties basis basically tells us about the default size of the control so i am setting it to 50 for button control 1 100 for button 2 and 150 for button 3 now if i go to my emulator and see currently it is not looking that much good visually So let me add few colors to each of these buttons. Let's set this one to green. To understand it in a better way, let's remove the flex layout dot grow for now. now you can see my button 1 is taking 50 units of space button 2 is taking 100 units of space and button 3 is taking 150 units of space and rest of the space is unutilized now to make sure we use all the remaining space we make use of the grow property of the flex layout so let's go back and set the grow property of flex layout now what this grow property tells us is it specifies how much an element should expand so button control 1 will be taking 1 unit of space button control 2 will be taking 2 units of space and button control 3 will be taking 1 unit of space if i go back and look at the emulator now you can see my button 1 and 3 are taking equal space and button 2 is taking 2 units of space so this is how we make sure our buttons expand and make use of the unutilized space as well now we can also align items across the cross axis for that we have another property of flex layout called align items so let us look at one more example to understand it better so in this example i am using a flex layout with direction set to column and three label controls inside it if you see this time i am making use of align items property of flex layout and i have set its value to center so it can take four values for this demo i am setting the value of align items property to center now if i go ahead and run the application we can see that all my label controls are center aligned so this property help us in aligning items along the cross axis now if we want to override this behavior and set the alignment for each element we can also do that using another property of flex layout called align self now for label 2 i have set the align self property to start and for label 3 i have set it to end if i go ahead and look at the emulator 
you can see my label one is still center aligned but this time my label two is aligned to start position and my label three is aligned at the end so this is how we can override the behavior of the align items property per element so this gives us the flexibility to customize positioning for each element within the layout so this is all about flex layout to conclude flex layout shines in creating responsive uis adjust properties like wrap grow and shrink to make sure your layout adjusts to various device sizes providing an optimal experience for your users so that's flex layout in dotnet maui if this tutorial helped you give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more dotnet maui content thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video